Okay. And that I think leads well into the, the next question here, you know, talking about the Seleucids and Alexander the Great, you know, maybe broadly speaking or, or in some broad strokes, what has been the last few generations like? Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. I mean, um, the region of Judea, Samaria has been part of empires for the last 500, 600 years, right? Uh, and, and even in the second millennium were conquest with Egypt. And, and so the world of empires in itself is nothing new. But uh, while the Judeans returned to Judea, uh, under the Persians in the fourth century, it is really with the campaigns of Alexander that their world is slowly changing. There's very little evidence that Alexander and his immediate successors cared much about Judea. They cared much more about the Phoenician cities, uh, about Samaria, and about the cities on the coast. Um, but it is in the time period let's say from 200 BCE onwards that that I mean the land is contested from roughly 280 onwards but but that from 200 onwards that the land gets actively contested between the Seleucids in the north and the Ptolemies who control Egypt in large part of of some parts of Asia Minor and the Greek islands in the south uh, and they're contesting this region the book of Daniel, uh, another apocryphal book of 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 the Bible uh, uh, narrates this miraculous story of the uh, power from the north and the power from the south and it's probably a, a reflection on these pressures the land judea was part uh, syria was always seleucid uh, but uh, uh, what modern day large parts of modern day lebanon palestine and israel were ptolemaic until uh, roughly 199 and uh, were then taken over by seleucid control for much of the second century the Ptolemies are trying, sometimes more, sometimes less, but they're trying to get a hold of this. So in broad strokes, the period has experienced significant change from one imperial overlord to another that doesn't really have to impact everyday people's lives. This would just be who's ultimately who who the tax man is. That that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And it's it's difficult to say in what degree in that time period this really has an impact. Um, let's say up to one hundred and sixty, right? Um, but we do have some evidence that in the one one nine one one nineties, we we have an inscription, for example, that mentions these roaming soldiers in the countryside and and when soldiers roam the countryside that's never a good thing yeah. right and yeah. things get stolen uh, and we know from other parts in the in the in the eastern mediterranean world that we also have these i will now tell my soldiers no longer to barrack themselves into people's houses and to no longer steal chickens or uh, or livestock and so so it is difficult to say but at the same time i mean these imperial armies they are, they are, they're not like modern warfare, right? These imperial arm, uh, uh, warfare takes place on a, on, a, on a side outside communities. But at the same time, these roaming soldiers who clearly were around there after battles for 10, 15 years, uh, they might have deep impacts on local communities for which we can trace nothing in the evidence. So this, this region is kind of pulsing back and forth between Seleucids, Greek influenced uh, Mesopotamia and, and Persia, and then the Ptolemies, also Greek influenced, but but e Egyptian dynasties, and, and and before that you mentioned Persian control, and and even before that this region was also just kind of pulsing back and forth between Assyrians and Egyptians as well. It's, it seems like it's a place where just by being the bad luck of where they are. They're in the middle of where a lot of different powerful people want to get to each other. And so it just seems to be that's the place that, that just kind of has the bad luck of being in the wrong place geographically where everybody else wants to get, get through. Is, is that an accurate representation? I think ab absolutely. I think that's that's absolutely fair. I think one, one should also add that, that the question is also why do these imperial powers care, right? And yeah. And why is this a region that is actually contested at all? And 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 
um, in the second century, you know, we, we need to add that northern Syria is very agriculturally lush. Uh, southern Palestine is also very lush. We have growing evidence of trade networks in the region. So, so economically, uh, not necessarily in the third century, but definitely in the second century and going into the first century, the region is also doing economically really, really well. Um, okay. So and, it's becoming a, an attractive piggy bank to have. That's right. And already in the third century, for example, we have these tax accounts of a, of a Ptolemaic noble. And he talks about how he travels around the southern Levant and he moves from Maresha to other communities. Uh, and he picks up this here and this there. And clearly talking about this deeply integrated economic network of exchange. and while this is part of an imperial world where the imperial agents are clearly extracting resources, they are also local beneficiaries to this. Um, so they are individuals and they may be noble families, they may be, may be traders who, who are clearly also benefiting from all of this.